I think that um, what COVID actually showed was that there, uh, the, the role of the state or the, of the government has become a central point of discussion again because uh, previously there were uh, a couple of uh, social groups that were saying that uh, there should be less government, less less uh, national state meddling in, in business and in politics and in everything else. Uh, but now with the pandemic, we saw that countries that had a strong uh, state, they could organize themselves faster. They had a, a better response to the COVID epidemic. Um, a state is something which can only be supported by taxes and by public redistribution. So there's not a lot of business around uh, governments. Um, healthcare is a very interesting uh, element of our society. People, when they say healthcare, they mean everything medicine related, but actually, healthcare in itself is a lot of different. Uh, uh, subsystems inside. For example, emergency care is very much different than chronic care is very much different than wellness and elective care. For example, elect elective care is, for example, plastic surgery for uh, breast augmentation or uh, lip augmentation or nose nose changes. Those things are also part of healthcare, but it's very much dependent on um, what the what the personal need is. And if we think that. Uh, in many countries, uh, there is a push for something called universal health coverage, which is basic health care, uh, the one which is caring for the basic life support, should be accessible to everybody, which means that it ultimately it should be probably uh, centrally or governmentally paid. And then it should be distributed to those who need it. Um, I think that the COVID epidemic showed how important public health elements are, so um, anti-infective uh, anti policy, uh, epidemiology, public health are all things which cannot be funded as a business because in times of good health and in times of no, no issues, they actually are not needed. They're very much needed though when we have an epidemic. And since with global warming and with the change in, in climate, there will be more and more uh, healthcare crisis. Um, I believe that public health and um, and infectology or, or um, infectious diseases will become more prominent in our healthcare system as specialties, but they cannot be funded from a business perspective. They will need to be tax, um, tax supported. So healthcare is going to change for certain. Uh, how exactly it will change is a difficult question and we'll, we'll need to see that, but that it will change is uh, a, mar a matter of certainty. So I'm certain that uh, healthcare will be changing dramatically. Um, some of it will be in response to COVID, some of it will be in response to the post-COVID uh, new world, where nothing will be exactly the same as it was before. Uh, probably uh, right up there at the very top would be uh, Singapore. And uh, in Europe, probably that would be Germany. Um, in the Americas, I would bet more on Canada than on the States. So uh, different countries cope relatively well with, with the COVID epidemic. The problem is that if you don't act early enough and quickly enough, the epidemic gets out of control and then your management options are very much limited. So you need to start aggressively uh, with, with the coping with, uh, with the COVID epidemic. Um, but ultimately you need to plan for having medical emergencies even when you don't have ones. And you cannot do that if you regard medicine as a business. And by medicine, I mean the usual care medicine, which is chronic diseases and uh, acute oncology and things like that. The normal run-of-the-mill uh, medicine is something which uh, cannot be run as a business only because it requires planning for eventualities like the pandemic, like... Um, migrant waves and like other things that impact um, social or public health quite a lot. Uh, discipline plays a very large part, but ultimately, uh, I don't know if it's because of discipline or maybe discipline becomes a result of, of, the, of the issue, but uh, the 
the countries and the societies that coped better were societies that are ordered well. They have uh, they have rules. People follow the rules. They're disciplined. Um, and I don't know if it's if discipline comes first and order comes second, or if order comes first and discipline comes second. Um, I believe that in countries where people follow the rules, they have a system of, of doing things. For example, when I was in Canada, um, I needed to um, upgrade my uh, driving license. I've had uh, a driving license for close to 25 years, maybe even 30 years. And when I went there and they told me, you need to get a G1 license, which is a license. Before you can get a full license, you need to have a kind of a, a license for a junior junior uh, driver. So uh, I had to take that license and there was no way I couldn't go directly to a full license. I needed to go through a junior license. And the junior license required me to drive with somebody who had five years experience next to me. I couldn't go on the, on the freeway because I had to have somebody with a full license next to sitting next to me. And uh, the requirement was for somebody with five years experience to be sitting next to me and I had 30 years of experience. So it was kind of uh, uh, unnerving, but the fact is that they had that rule and it had to be followed. You couldn't uh, cut corners. So it's things like that in, in uh, countries where rules are followed and obeyed people tend to be more disciplined. In countries where you can cut corners, people tend to be less disciplined because when people from the West come to, to our countries, they start cutting corners. When we go to Western countries or countries that have a high level of, of discipline, we become very much disciplined. So I don't know which is first and which is second, but uh, people that coped better, societies that coped better had better rules. Yeah. Uh, in some cases, that was a fact. Uh, a lot of people had to live in the hospital in order not to uh, be able to um, So they had to live, live for a week or 10 days in the hospital and then change shifts and other people started living in the hospital. So it was difficult. Uh, we've got that period now. Uh, things are starting to get back to normal. They will not go to the former normal. We will have a new uh, new normal. Some of the businesses uh, uh, took a deep dive and they will come back up very quickly. Some businesses were slow to, to extinguish and they will be slow to come back to life. Some businesses will not come back to life at all. Other businesses like for example telehealth. If you have the bell-shaped curve 